Hello Simmers and welcome to the second part of these, uh, this uh, series covering a long haul flight with the Felis 747 200 um, and for this flight we'll take the flight from Amsterdam to San Francisco. We are at the gate, we are fully ready for push and start. So uh, let's um, release the parking brake and start the push and the start uh, procedure. So parking brakes released. Parking brake released. Clear the push. Here comes the pushback, light them up. We'll set this one uh, transponder to transponder mode. We'll go to the flight engineers panel. We'll close the pack valves. So that is correct. Go to the overhead, set the start valve switch to on. Ready to start the engines. And right Ready now, for engine start. we'll start the engines. We'll use uh, system number uh, one today. So move first, we'll start engine number four, then three, two, and then one. Move for system. For engine number four, system one, switch to ground start. Engine four. Wait for the valve ground open light to illuminate. Then if you look at the uh, flight engineers panel, you will see N2 starting to rise. And we'll go to the pilot seat. And as soon as uh, N2 is reaching 20%, we will, we will hear a call out from the flight engineer and we'll open the fuel flow. 20% N2. Fuel on. Fuel on. Now we can up. See that the engine is uh, exhaust gas temperature is rising, N1 is rising. Starter off. Engine stabilized. Okay, engine is stabilized. Start engine number three. So system one ground starts. Halt until valve light illuminates. Look over your shoulder at the N2. Make sure that it is rising. The flight engineer is monitor monitoring that, but. Uh, in the sim, always good to check yourself that it is uh, that you didn't forget anything. And wait for the 20% callouts. 20% and two. Fuel, Fuel on. Fuel on. Exhaust gas temperature Light is up. rising. And one is on the rise. Starter off. Engine stabilized. Okay, so start uh, engine number two, system number two, Starting ground starts, two. Start valve open, N2 is rising, oh, wait for the 20% callouts. Twenty 20% N2, fuel on, fuel on. Light up. Just about done here. Go ahead and set your parking brake. Okay. Parking brake set. Clear to disconnect. And we're disconnecting the tow. Give me just a moment. Okay, Starter so... Off. Exhaust temperature rising. Engine stabilized. And finally, engine number one. System number one, ground Starting starts. Engine one. Start a valve open. Valve is open. And two is rising. And two. And fuel, fuel on. on. Exhaust gas temperature Light is up. rising. We have fuel flow. N1 is rising. Starter off. And we're disconnected. Signal and pin on the left. Take it easy and have a safe flight. Okay, we have four good engine starts. Thanks for your help. See you next time. Bye bye. And here we have the engines now running. So, with the engines now started, we have to go to the flight engineer station. And first we have to, thing we have to do is set the engine generators to the buses. So move all the generator switches to close. And then you move the split system breaker also to close. Now you can see that the auxiliary power unit uh, is now back to red. So what we can do with the bleed air open we can close the APU bleed and switch off the APU master. We can open the packs and set all the fans on. And now the air will run, the temperature will rise quite quickly. So move these switches back to the lower part of the second white line.
there we are. And what we also have to do is take a look at the uh, hydraulic uh, system. So make sure that the air pumps are auto. Electric hydraulic is switched off, so close the guard. And that is basically it. So let's run the after start checklist. After start checklist. Flight recorder on. Start switches off. Beacon lights on. On. Brake pressure checked. Check. Start levers. Idle detent. Engine and the ice off. Electrical panel check. Pack valves open. Dual warning lights out. Hydraulic panel. Check. Flight recorder. On. After start checklist completed. Okay, so let's set the flaps to 20. Flaps 20. And let's see. We can set the probe heaters on. I want the wing anti-ice on, as well as the nacelle anti-ice. Because the temperature is below 10 degrees already, we have visible moisture in the sky, so we're going to climb through some clouds with an air temperature lower than 10 degrees Celsius, so that means the anti-ice should be on. Body gear steering is on. Uh, the takeoff data, the airspeed bugs, they are set. We have to set our stabilizer, however. So let's go to the performance calc. And the step trim should be at 6.5 units. So make sure that this little... Uh, indicator here is at 6.5 and now we can also do a flight control check now here is this little uh, placard that says show, show height yokes it's a click spot so, you, so you, you know, it's self-explanatory you can click uh, to show or hide the yokes I usually have them on with the flight control check and switch them off throughout all the other stages of flight because it's quite uh, inconveniently placed uh, exactly in front of the uh, HSI. So during flight I usually switch the yokes off, but for now full left, full right, neutral, down, up, neutral and the rudder, full left. All right, neutral. So flight controls are checked. We have set the step trim. Uh, probe heaters are on. Yaw dampers are checked. So APU was off. Fuel heat was off. So I guess we're good for the taxi checklist. Taxi checklist, please. Flaps. Flaps 20. Flaps 20. Take off data, EPR and the airspeed bugs. Hold on. Oh, EPR. I forgot to do that. EPR was in go-around mode uh, for the startup. After start, you switch it to takeoff dry. Set and cross-check. Stabilizer trim. Set in green band. Probe heat. On. Flight controls. Checked. Check. Yaw dampers. Checked. Check. Seat belt and shoulder harness. Check. Checked. APU. Is off. Off. Fuel heat is off. off. Totalizer and gross weight. Checked. Set. Flight engineer and pilot panels. Checked. Check. Aft cargo heat. On. Normal. Normal. Seat belt and shoulder harness. Check. Checked. Taxi checklist completed. All right. So next checklist will be the before take of checklist. So uh, ground. Good morning, KLM 605 Heavy. We are uh, ready to taxi. So then it will be a KLM 605 Heavy, you're cleared to taxi runway 24, uh, holding point Sierra, I think it was 7, it's been a while, yeah, holding point Sierra 7, uh, runway 24, via uh, Alpha 17 and Alpha. And usually they don't mention that at Schiphol, because in Amsterdam, ATC, um, uh, wants you to know that 
there are two taxiways surrounding the uh, aprons, Alpha and Bravo. Alpha is clockwise, Bravo is counterclockwise. So they will never give you the ins instruction via Alpha. They just say taxi uh, holding point uh, 24, share 7. So that's what we're going to do. So we'll release the parking brake release. Parking brake. We'll throttle up. And get this bad boy rolling. Or bad boy. <laughs> it's not a bad boy. This is the queen of aviation, the grand dame of aviation. It's a diva, it's not a bad boy. So let's taxi out. And the ground speed can be uh, is indicated here on the top right corner of the HSI. Kevin ready. All right, cabin is ready. Now in terms of taxi speeds, you want uh, a speed of roughly 1, 4, 14 knots on the straights and not faster than 10 knots on 90 degrees turns. So we are taxiing out of the uh, apron here and turning right. So I don't want to be exceed uh, 10 knots. So 9 knots is fine for now. Okay, so add in a little bit of thrust to uh, increase the taxi speed, 5 knots is a bit too less. What we still have to do, however, is we have to select the uh, EPR uh, mode, so the computer is take off dry. Now that has got nothing to do with the weather situation, so it's not like if it's raining you should take another mode. Take off dry means that the takeoff will uh, take place without water injection in the engines. Um, in the real world airplane, back in the days, the pilots had the option to um, enable water injection in the engines to provide extra power. That is not modeled in the Felis uh, 747, however. Uh, so in the Felis, you always set it to take off dry for takeoff, and we'll use the EPR mode. And you leave the airplane in EPR mode until you have reached your flap 5 speed and retracted your flaps to flaps 5. Once that is completed, you switch it to climb mode and speed mode. But for now we'll just leave it uh, in EPR. So what I will do is I'll switch on the flight directors. And in here is the radio INS switches. And I want to go full INS uh, from the moment that we take off. And now we have to slow down a little bit because there's a turn coming up and I'm speeding a little bit. So I will switch the radio INS switches to INS and set this gauge also to INS. So that will have the autopilot um, fly the, uh, the INS profile for the uh, lateral navigation. And with the uh, EPR computer in takeoff dry mode and EPR selected, as soon as we switch on the uh, auto throttle, it will move the thrust levers to the position where the uh, needles will stay on the indicated EPR um, value, which is down there. Which is indicated here with the uh, orange uh, bug. And what I forgot to do is switch on the runway turn off lights for taxi. So we'll do that right now. Okay, so taxi out checklist is completed. Now the icing considerations, uh, like I mentioned before, we expect uh, icing conditions when we climb through the clouds. So the anti ice for wing and nacelle was switched on. Uh, the cabin alert was received. We can set the starters to flight start right now. They have to be in flight start mode uh, during takeoff and climb. Uh, 
Okay, let's take a quick look at the cabin temperature in the meantime, which is nicely back at 20 degrees, so that is good. So what we have to do prior to takeoff is go back to the flight engineer station to uh, close the uh, pack valves for takeoff. So we're coming up to uh, Sierra 7 uh, already, we have to take a left turn here and then we are at the runway for our departure towards San Francisco. So let's turn left. Close the thrust levers. Let the airplane come to a full stop at the line down here. Monitor tower on 119 decimal to 2. Okay, Lim 605 heavy monitoring tower 119 decimal 225. Tower KLM 605 Heavy is holding short. Runway 24, Sierra 7. Cabin crew, take your seats. Line up and wait, runway uh, 24, KLM uh, 605 Heavy. So let's say we're clear to line up and wait. Let's set the uh, transponder to TARA. And on the flight engineers panel, we'll now switch the packs off. Airplane is really heavy. We need a considerable, considerable amount of thrust to uh, start rolling. But that's just the way we like it and what this uh, add-on is designed for. Approaching two four. Two four is verified and correct. So I'll just add in a little bit of thrust on the uh, number one and number two engines for this uh, right hand turn. Uh, we can switch the weather radar on now. On runway two, four. Okay, so the body gear steering can be disarmed. Let's run the before takeoff checklist. Let's set the parking brake. Now, if you use your toe brakes and you set the parking brake, you will see that the light will not illuminate. Just parking brake set. press your toe brakes once again, and that will set the parking brake. So, before takeoff checklist. Before takeoff checklist. I think considerations. Checked. Check. Cabin alert. Checked. Check. Transponder. Check. Ignition. Flight start. Flight start. Body gear steering. Disarmed. Disarm. Pack valves. Closed. Closed. Pressurization mode selector. Auto. Auto. Fuel boost pumps. On. On. Cross feed valves. Check. Check. 
Before takeoff checklist completed. Right, we are good to go. So, as you can see, 20 minutes after we initiated on our runway, pushback. Two, four, on runway, two, four. We are finally good to go. Parking brake released. All right, make sure that the alt select is indicated in here. We'll advance the thrust levers. We'll set the uh, elapsed time to uh, run. Auto throttle engage Stabilized. for EPR. Thrust set. Thrust set. Check. Airspeed active. 80 knots. Cross check. Release forward pressure on the yoke. Check. Rotate. Positive rate. Okay, gear up. Cover gear your ears up. for an external flyby. Yeah, let's turn left to follow the uh, INS up. profile. It's just so slow on your <laughs> responses, it's amazing. Okay, gear is up. And off. I like to have the uh, performance calc page in here. So 196 is flaps 10. So we're not there yet. We're now at 176. Okay, so let's lower the nose and start to accelerate. It's quite bumpy up here. Okay. Okay, flaps 10. Flaps 10. Okay, in the flaps 5, speed is 216. So hard to fly this thing manually. <laughs> Alright, so flap 5 speed is 216, so flaps 5. Flaps 5. Altimeter setting. And there's lots of stuff you have to do at the same time here. So what I will do is now engage the autopilot. We'll go climb mode, speed, alt select, and increase the speed to 250. We had flaps 1 at 2.36. We'll use vertical speed modes to climb 6,000 feet. We are accelerating. Yeah, let's climb a little bit slower and let's make sure that we are now clear to climb flight level 160. Alt selects. Vertical speeds. 500 feet per minute, so that will have us accelerate 
And let's say that we are cleared for a high speed climb at 340 knots. Flaps one. Flaps one. And let's uh, switch the uh, pack valves open. And we can switch the fuel heat. Uh, where is it? To auto. Okay, flaps up. Flaps up. All right, let's run the uh, after uh, takeoff checklist. Yep. And we can switch the outbound landing lights off. After takeoff checklist. Gear lever. Up off. and off. Landing and logo lights. Mm. Yeah, well, we can uh, only switch off the uh, landing lights when we have passed 10,000 feet. So I'll just skip this item for now. Ignition. Just checked. Flight check. start. Seat belts and no smoking sign. Check. Back valves. Open. Open. Fuel heat. Auto. Auto. After takeoff checklist completed. So right now we are accelerating. We are flying our standard instrument departure. And we are at speed, so we can now increase our rate of climb. Let's go to 1500 feet per minute. So monitor that at that rate of climb, the N1 percentage is not exceeding uh, 100. So right now we are at 93%. It will increase once we get uh, higher. So there will be a point uh, in time where we uh, have to reduce our rate of climb to 1000 feet per minute. But for now we are good. two minutes within two minutes we should be able to uh, switch off the landing lights since it is still quite bumpy I will leave the fast and seatbelt signs on for now As you can see, the N1 is now 100% to maintain this rate of climb. So what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the rate of climb to 1000 feet per minute. That should ease off the uh, N1 percentage a little bit. As you can see right now. Uh, we are starting to approach uh, 10,000 feet. We have to reset our QNH to standard, 1013. Should have done that uh, earlier, but was a little bit busy with hand flying the airplane and normally uh, well anyway here we are and we also have to set that at the pressurization system so this one goes to two nine or, nine or two in here 
and this one goes to 1013. Now we've passed 10,000 feet, so we'll switch off the landing lights. And we continue our climb. Now on the INS, what you can see is that we are now flying from waypoint 4 to waypoint 5. That means that waypoint positions 1, 2 and 3 are already available to enter new waypoints. The next couple of waypoints for our flight. So switch remote on each unit. Move this selector to waypoint. Set the counter to 1. And then you can just enter your next waypoint, which will be Stoats. So that's one, two, and then three. So let's just enter the next couple of waypoints. So waypoint one will be Stoat, that is North 52016. So North 52016 insert and let's see if that's east or west that's already west and then four zeros one three so west one two three four one three yeah one three insert waypoint number two that will be Mowgli at north five two one eight five North 52185, insert by west. Triple O 161, 1, 2, 3, 1, 6, 1, insert. Waypoint number 3, that will be Betax at north 53005. North 53005, by west. Triple O five four zero one two three five four zero insert and we are now flying from waypoint five to six so we can enter waypoint number four which will be Mamul which is north five three two five one by west uh double O one one six eight There we are. So to Mamel is now set, which is down there. So this is the bit of our route that we can fly now. We are coming up at 13,000 feet already, so let's say that we're clear to climb to our initial cruise of 280. Alt select, vertical speed 1,000 feet, speed 340. Still too bumpy to release the passengers, so a uh, bit unfortunate for them, but that's just the way it is. Now we are above the clouds. I don't have much visible moisture up here. What are we doing? We are turning right as we shoot. So I will just switch the uh, wing and the nacelle anti eyes off for now. That will also reduce the uh, the N1 percentage. Now we'll go for an external view, so this is probably quite loud, so you might want to cover your ears uh, or remove your headphones uh, from directly over your ears. It's coming right now in 3, 2, 1.
such a beautiful airplane. Oh, I love it. All right, uh, we are maintaining our rate of climb. Nice and easy. That's just the way it goes with uh, an airplane of this size and this weight. After takeoff checklist. Gear lever. Off. Landing and logo lights. Off. Ignition. Check. Seat belts and no smoking sign. Check. Back valves. Open. Fuel heat. Auto. Off the takeoff checklist. Completed. All right. So the next checklist will be the descent approach check. So I'll just uh, leave the uh, EFB for now in the map mode. And on the flight engineers panel for the uh, environmental control system, we can now switch the humidifier on because we are above 10,000 feet. And that is basically it for now. Close to reserve valves, they are not required at this stage of flight. I will just open the crossfeed valves. That's good for now. All right, so what I want to do at this point in the climb. Um, on the ground, we have aligned our INS. And the INS uh, alignment will, well, over time, become less accurate when you are flying. So what you want to do is, when you are flying with this airplane uh, over land, you want to update your INS and you update the INS using um, VOR DME stations en route. Now, I think that in real life, if I remember correctly, you can update an INS with DME only, but for some reason in the Felis um, only VOR DMEs will work for the INS updating. Uh, and I want to update my INS before I enter my oceanic uh, cross crossing. And then we have to do it again somewhere over Canada when we make landfall and we are in range of a couple of VOR DMEs. But before we start this section of the flight, I want to be uh, as accurately as I possibly can on the INS. So what I will do is take a look at the chart and go to a uh, high en route page or a few. And we'll look up uh, a couple of VOR DMEs that we can use to update the INS when when we are on this stretch of the flight plan over the UK. So I want something a little bit uh, in the middle. So I think Ottringham could be a nice one. And then we might use uh, Manchester or Wallasey. I think we're going for Wallasey and Ottringham. So what you do is you go, let's see, this is 10 miles. So, to Wallasey, that's 10, 20, 30. Yeah, I think Wallasey and Ottringham will do. So, when you go to your uh, Navigraph, hover your cursor over the station. This will give you the VOR DME details. It will give you frequency. It will give you the exact coordinates, the elevation of the beacon, and the range and power of the station. And make sure that you only use 2000 watts or more for your um, updating. So we can use Wallasi VOR. So that is uh, Whiskey Alpha Lima. That is on frequency 114.1. The elevation is 55 feet and we'll enter that as zero because the elevation has to be entered in thousands of feet. 
And then we need the latitude and longitude for the uh, station. So that will be north uh, 5323. And now I cannot enter 31. The last two digits, 31.0, I have to convert to a percentage of a minute. So you do that by grabbing a calculator and divide in this case 31 by 60 which is 5 so it will be north 53235 by west 003 uh, 08 and then I have to divide 4.1 by 60 is 0 0.0 so velocity VOR will be north 5323.5 by west 00308.0. That's information that I need for the INS updating concerning station Wallasi. The other one that I wanted to use was Otteringham, which is also 2000 watts, so that's pretty good. So we'll use Oscar Tango Romeo on frequency 1139er. On an elevation also of zero at north 53 41 and then it's 53.6 divided by 60 53.6 divided by 60 is 0.8 by west triple uh, O uh, zero six and then uh, 1, 3 or 13.4 divided by 60 is 0.2. So it's going to be north 53418 by west 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.2 for Ottringham. And we'll enter that in a minute but what I will do for now is already dial in the frequencies for the nav radio so on the captain side I want to use Wallasi that's 1141 and on the first officer side I will use Ottringham that's 113 decimal niner Now, Ottringham is already uh, a reading on that frequency. So what I want to do now is make sure that the reading that I get on DME2 is actually Ottringham. Now, an INS, or a, a correction, a VOR DME, is a radio station that is broadcasting a signal. And that signal is the uh, identifier, so in this case OTR, in Morse code. And that Morse code is shown here below. So that's three dashes for the O, one dash for the T, and then a point dash point for the R. So that is long, 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 short, long, short. And you will hear this in beep. So it will be beep, 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 beep. So if I go to the fly deck and I set the nav 2 volume control open, that is the Morse code that I want to hear. Yeah, so that's Ottringham identified. Now, as soon as we get a reading on the Velocity VOR, uh, we want to make sure that uh, we hear the Velocity uh, Morse code. Which will be a uh, beep, 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 beep. But uh, we'll get back to that in a minute. I think we'll possibly be in range of Velocity as soon as we st reached Stowed or something like that. So. But we'll just have to keep an eye on the DME uh, one uh, reading in here. But at least I have uh, the two VOR DMEs identified, um, selected. I have one identified already, which is always good. We are climbing to 280. We are almost there, just a little under uh, four minutes. 
Now what we also have to keep an eye on is the speed. Right now we are climbing out at 340 knots. The flight plan however states that we want to cruise at Mach 0.85. And you can see the Mach number in here. We are now at Mach 0.800. Now if you have a more modern day Boeing, there is a switch in here that can switch between knots and Mach in the speed window on the MCP. That is not the case in this older version uh, autopilot. So what you have to do here is closely monitor the Mach window in here and once the Mach value displays the desired Mach that you want your airplane to cruise at, you switch from speed to Mach hold and then the auto throttle system will maintain whatever Mach speed was indicated when you pressed the button. So there's Mach 0.82 coming up. We are now 26,000 feet. 2,000 feet to go. Now the air is much more stable at this altitude, so we will switch the fasten seatbelt signs off. Well, we'll start our turn to the northeast. And let's already switch on the remotes on the uh, INS units because I want to start uh, entering the next couple of waypoints we can add another four which is really helpful Thousand level off. so waypoint number five is the next one but I'll just start uh, punching in those numbers as soon as we have reached Mach 0.85 and switch to Mach uh, hold or Mach mode And there's Mach 0.85, so let's switch this one to Mach. And we have reached flight level 280, so we can also set the mode now from climb to cruise. So right now we are 280, Mach 0.85. And we are ready to punch in the next couple of waypoints. But this uh, completes the uh, climb out phase of this uh, flight. So this also concludes the second part of this uh, series. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked it. If you have any tips, tricks, comments, questions whatsoever, please leave them in the comment section below. As usual, do so in a respectful manner. Uh, we are all here to learn and learning is the objective of this channel. And uh, I will end this video here and we'll start uh, the next uh, part at this position where we will enter the next couple of waypoints and start working on the INS updating. So, hope you like this video, hope to see you in part 3 and until that time please stay healthy and stay safe. Thank you for watching and bye bye.